Understanding of radiographs play an important role in assessment and diagnosis of the problem. Watch the first part of thoracolumbar examination for better understanding of this video. Thoracolumbar radiographs. Normal lateral radiograph of the lumbar spine. Normal lateral thoracic spine. In the lateral view, note first the lumbar curve. Point A shows typical normal curve and point B shows loss of lordosis. It is most often seen in prolapsed intervertebral disc as a result of protective muscle spasm, but is not confirmatory. Note curvatures in thoracic spine. Pointer shows a typical normal curve and point B shows an increased but regular curve typical of senile kyphosis. Schumann's disease is another frequent cause of a regular dorsal kyphosis. In both the lumbar and the thoracic spine, note any sharp alteration in the curvature Angular kyphosis found typically where there is pathology restricted to one or two vertebral bodies, for example, from fractures, tuberculosis, or other infections, tumor, osteoporosis, and osteomalacia with local vertebral body collapse. Look at the shape of the bodies and the size of the discs. Compare with the bodies and disc spaces above and below. Point A shows anterior clefts. Point B shows anterior notches. Point C shows incomplete fusion of elements. Point D shows epiphysis. Point A shows vascular tracts which may persist. These are normal in the child's spine. In this radiograph, pointer shows disc calcification. Point B shows the typical appearance of Schumann's disease, with kyphosis as shown in point C. Point D shows anterior wedging of not less than 5 degree, involving at least 3 sequential vertebrae. Point A shows ragged appearance of the epiphysis. Point F shows a central disc herniation, Schumann's node, but this is not always associated with Schumann's disease. In this radiograph, pointer shows disc narrowing at any level in the spine is the earliest evidence of tuberculosis and other infections. Point B shows narrowing at L5S1 and, less commonly, in the two spaces above occurs in long-standing disc lesions and is often associated with anterior lipping. Pointer shows increased density in the picture frame, appearance of the vertebral bodies, in Paget's disease. Point B shows marked narrowing and increased density, seen in Cal's disease, vertebra planar. Point C shows any space occupying lesion in a vertebral body, usually due to tumor or infection. Point D shows corner vertebral erosions, Romanus lesions seen in ankylosing spondylitis. Note the relationship of each vertebra to its neighbor. In particular, Note spondylolithesis, as shown in point A. Point B shows retrospondylolisthesis and usually associated with disc degeneration. In this radiograph, point A shows anterior lipping. Point B shows posterior lipping. Lipping is also the main feature of osteoarthritis. At point C, Note impingement of spinous processes kissing spines. Lipping is seen in chronic disc lesions, mainly at L5S1, but also at the other rarer disc prolapse sites. This X-ray shows 
Normal anteroposterior view of the lumbar spine. This is the normal anteroposterior view of the thoracic spine. In the anteroposterior view, note the presence of any congenital abnormalities, such as at point A congenital vertebral fusion can be seen. It is often associated with a congenital scoliosis. Point B shows anterior spina bifida, in which there is failure of fusion of the vertebral body elements. This is usually symptom free. Point C shows partial sacralization of the fifth lumbar vertebra, a possible cause of low back pain. Point D shows the presence of posterior spina bifida. In this radiograph, point A shows the presence of any localized lateral angulation of the spine due to lateral vertebral collapse, for example, M from fracture, infection, tumor, osteoporosis or other causes. Point B shows hemivertebra, a common cause of congenital scoliosis. This is usually associated with an extra rib. Look at the soft tissue shadows at the sides of the vertebrae, observing the fusiform increased density, typical of a tuberculous abscess. Note disc obliteration and early lateral wedging. Examine the source shadows for symmetry. Lateral displacement of the edge of the shadow and increased density within the main area occupied by source suggests a source abscess. Typically found in tuberculosis of the lumbar or lowermost thoracic spine. Look for lateral lipping as shown in point A. Lateral lipping at T1 to L1 may be an early sign of ankylosing spondylitis. But there and elsewhere it usually indicates osteoarthritis. Picture B is the diagnosis of ankylosing spondylitis. Note any body and facet joint fusions and ligament calcification. Look at the sacroiliac joints. Point A shows unilateral involvement of sclerosis, cystic changes or obliteration may occur in tuberculosis and other infections. Bilateral involvement is shown in point B is common in ankylosing spondylitis. Normal localized lateral view of the lumbosacral junction. Look for evidence of spondylolithesis. In the normal spine, the pars interarticularis indicated by point P lying between the superior and the inferior articular facets is intact, and a vertical raised from the anterior margin of the sacrum lies in front of L5. If spondylolithesis is suspected, the lateral should always be taken with the patient standing. Note any defect is indicated by P and any forward slip as indicated by point U. The deformity may occur between L5 and S1 and much less frequently between L4, L5 or L3, L4. Note the relationship between the posterior edge of the slipping vertebra to the one below. The example shows a forward slip of 25%. This is the normal oblique view of the lumbosacral junction. In an oblique view, note that the Scotty dog shadows shown by dark grey. The nose N is formed by a transverse process. The ear S by a superior articular process. The front legs I is formed by an inferior articular process.
and the neck peak by the pars interarticularis. In spondylolisthesis, indicated by point A, the dog becomes decapitated owing to forward slip and the inferior articular process of the vertebra above encroaches on the neck. In spondylolysis, where no slip has occurred, the neck is elongated, as shown as point B, or develops a collar. A spinal stenosis is suspected. Calculate the canal to body ratio, A into B ratio, C into D. Where pointer shows interpedicular distance, point B shows spinal canal front to back. Point C shows width of vertebral body and point D shows body front to back. The normal range is from approximately 1 ratio 2 to 1 ratio 4.5. Values greater than 4.5 suggest spinal stenosis. Note the presence of any structural scoliosis. This is associated with rotation of the vertebral spines towards the concavity, indicated by point A and narrowing of pedicles. On the convexity of the curve, there is widening of disc spaces, indicated by point B. In the thorax there is ribcage distortion indicated by point C. To assess the severity of a scoliotic curve, the Cobb method is used to measure the deformity. First, find the upper and lower limits of the primary curve by drawing tangents to the vertebral bodies and noting where the disc spaces begin to widen on the concavity of the curve. Now draw perpendiculars from the vertebrae that form the limits of the curve, marked by X. Note the angle between them. This is a measure of the primary curve, and can be used for comparison with past and future radiographs. Assessing skeletal maturity. Scoliotic curves deteriorate with growth, and the prognosis is often dependent on how much more the child has to grow. This may be judged by examining appropriate radiographs and assessing sexual maturity. Risa grading of skeletal maturity uses radiographs of the iliac crest and its apophyses which ossifies from front to backwards. R0 shows the ossification center has not appeared. R1 shows up to 25% as present. R2 shows up to 50% as present. R3 shows up to 75% as present. R4 shows up to the whole of the apophyses is ossified. R5 shows the apophyses has fused and all growth has ceased. In girls, RISA 1 and 5 commonly occur at ages 13 and half and 15 and half, and in boys at 15 and half and 17 and half. Examination of ossification of the Olcranon epiphysis. Point 1 shows appearance of two centers. Point 2 shows the epiphysis becomes half moon shaped. Point 3 shows the epiphysis becomes square shaped. Point 4 shows partial union. Point 5 shows complete union. Rib angle assessment. In infantile scoliosis, note the difference in rib angles at the apex of the curve by the shown construction. A difference of 20 degrees or more must be regarded as indicating a potentially progressive scoliosis. This radiograph shows 
A dorsal scoliosis associated with an anomaly of a vertebral body and an extra rib on the convexity of the curve. Diagnosis is hemivertebra and structural scoliosis. This CT scan shows an abnormal encroachment on the spinal canal. Diagnosis is left sided intervertebral disc prolapse with distortion of the thecal shadow. This radiograph shows a regular dorsal kyphosis associated with anterior vertebral lipping and a degree of osteoporosis. Diagnosis is senile kyphosis. In this radiographs, there is narrowing of the L5-S1 disc space with anterior lipping of the corresponding vertebrae. Diagnosis is typical appearance of degenerative disc disease and lumbosacral osteoarthritis. This is the myelogram of a patient complaining of back and right leg pain. There was weakness of dorsiflexion and aversion of the right foot, and there was some sensory impairment over the lateral aspect of the calf. The myelogram shows a well-defined indentation of the contrast medium at the L4 fifths level. Diagnosis is prolapsed intervertebral disc. This radiograph there is increased density of the bony shadows in the region of the right sacroiliac joint, whose outline has become obscured. There was associated local pain, malaise and pyrexia. Attempts to spring the sacroiliac joints produced great pain. Diagnosis is, the appearances are typical of an infective or pyogenic arthritis of the sacroiliac joint. This radiograph is of an 8-year-old boy, complaining of back pain, malaise, night sweats, loss of spinal movements, and pain on percussion over the spine. There is loss of a disc space, slight vertebral wedging, and a fusiform abscess shadow on both sides of the spine. Diagnosis is, the appearances are typical of tuberculosis of the spine. This lateral radiograph shows that there is forward slip of L5 on S1 of a little less than 25%. There is an associated defect in the pars interarticularis of L5. In the oblique projection, the Scotty dog has been decapitated. The patient complained of low back and buttock pain. Diagnosis is long-standing spondylolithesis of L5 on S1. In this radiograph, there is a regular kyphosis with slight anterior wedging of the vertebral bodies, irregularity of the disc margins, and central disc herniation Schmall's nodes. Diagnosis is the appearances are typical of Schumann's disease. This radiograph shows a thoracic scoliosis convex to the patient's right. There is vertebral rotation and asymmetry of the rib cage. Diagnosis is idiopathic scoliosis with fixed primary thoracic curve. Hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon.